So hi Mir. Hi. Thank you so much yeah. for visiting us at Clear. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah. Yes. So I'm Amit Gautam, founder and CEO of Textile Genesis. Uh, prior to starting Textile Genesis about four years ago uh, uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, prior to that, I was leading the uh, global fashion and textile business at Lensing. You perhaps know Lensing. Yeah, yeah. So I was running uh, their textile business out of Austria and Hong Kong that I did about four years. Uh, and I was also behind some of the launches uh, at Lensing while I was there in terms of new fiber innovations. And prior to that, about 10 years in Europe, in Amsterdam, Switzerland, working with McKinsey, with World Economic Forum, with Booz, mm -hmm. uh, helping companies around sustainability and commercial excellence, cutting across multiple sectors, not just in the apparel, mm -hmm. but looking at agriculture industry, looking at renewable energy, mm -hmm. uh, looking at pharma, so a bit all over the place, <laughs> like a typical consultant, but mm -hmm. I would say last 8 to 10 years, primarily focused on the fashion and apparel. And in terms of textile genesis, uh, uh, that the whole genesis of textile genesis happened while I was still at Lensing. When I was meeting a lot of customers, they were asking us at that point, what was we doing, what were we doing to protect their business model against counterfeiting or against, you know, mm -hmm. uh, players trying to adulterate in the supply chain. So that was more or less my thinking around, you know, how to build a platform that creates full traceability for sustainable, uh, differentiated, and certified materials. So now we have our technology center in India, Bangalore, mm -hmm. uh, and our customer engagement center. We have three satellite offices in mainland China, in Bangladesh, Turkey. And later this year, opening our office in Amsterdam in August. So I will be relocating to, to Amsterdam from in a couple of months, basically, yeah. So, do you see an increase in the interest uh, in blockchain for fashion companies within the past few years? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, when we started four years ago, it was just an idea and it was a big leap of faith because, mm -hmm. I mean, there was hardly any uh, customers at that point, right? But if I look at the last just three years, I mean, this topic has become tremendously important for the industry. If you ask to any head of purchasing, mm -hmm. head of supply chain, at a brand and say what's your number one priority invariably they would say supply chain traceability mm -hmm. right and then you ask why i think there are a couple of factors why it has become very important the regulatory regulations are changing quite a bit the customer and consumer preferences have changed uh, the brands themselves have set very aggressive targets around sustainable materials so it's part of their corporate objectives and targets mm -hmm. so it's a multiple of factors that are contributing to very strong, I would say, traction and demand on this topic around sustainability and traceability because they're very deeply connected. Mm -hmm. You can't talk about credibly any sustainable material journey without underpinning it with traceability, mm -hmm. right? So I think this is very important. Traceability is not a separate topic. Traceability and sustainability are two sides mm -hmm. of the same coin. Mm -hmm. That very deeply interconnected topics mm -hmm. because if you tomorrow market this particular dress that you're wearing which is nice mm -hmm. beautiful is actually organic cotton mm -hmm. how do you know it's organic cotton if you're not exactly. traceable right? yeah. if yeah. someone says this is a sustainable or you know responsible wool mm -hmm. how do you know make sure it's responsible wool if it's not fully traceable end to end you mentioned about the digital fiber coin yeah uh, so i was wondering if you might elaborate a little bit yeah. more on how you work with the fiber coin i think the first thing is fiber coin has nothing to do with cryptocurrency yeah it has nothing to do with bitcoins and ethereum and all of that because mm -hmm. that's a completely different world right what fiber coin is nothing but digitization of physical volume of certified sustainable or differentiated material to create a, a, a closed loop traceability system, right? So, uh, for example, uh, if today Lensing or any sustainable fiber producer ships 100 kgs of material to a spinner, mm -hmm. then on our system, that spinner's account would have 100 kgs of tensile or Ecovero plus equivalent fiber coin. Yeah. So one kg of fiber becomes one fiber coin. And why do we do that? We digitize physical volume for two main reasons. First it eliminates the need for any PDF or paper-based transaction certificates 
which is the bread and butter of the industry for last two decades to create traceability. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it? A piece of paper is taken as a proof mm -hmm. of traceability and therefore it's open to a lot of corruption, fraud, contamination mm -hmm. and digitization through fiber coin eliminates that. Mm -hmm. Second key benefit of fiber coin is it, it creates a, a zero sum game, a closed loop system. If 100 kgs come in, only 97 kgs can come out at spinning stage or 70 kgs at finished garment, right? taking into account right. the conversion losses. Yeah. So no one can double count or triple count material. We provide 100% assurance, no material can be double counted ever, just not possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've been working in the fashion industry for many years, so I know that there is kind of a close culture on, and we are not used to sharing the information on the supply chain. So I was wondering what, uh, what are the concerns uh, from the companies when they have to create this uh, full traceability around the supply chain? I think that's a good point. So I think the industry is shifting that uh, they're realizing it's a license to operate. It's not something they can uh, avoid because of a lot of reasons. Uh, and second, I think the, uh, the data privacy and confidentiality on the system is extremely high. So no supplier can see any other supplier's data. Mm -hmm. uh, no sub -sub -sub supplier can see who are other spinners supplying to. No fabric mill can see who are the customers of other fabric mills, right? So there's very little mm -hmm. to be afraid of as far as the supplier to engage with the system. Mm -hmm. yeah? And likewise, no brand can see any other brand supply chain. So there's nothing to be... Uh, uh, nothing to be uh, scared in terms of uh, sharing data, but this is where we clearly see the industry moving because this is uh, from regulatory perspective and for the brands themselves to have the surety of the materials that are coming from the mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. sources in the supply chain. Uh, this is the way I would say the industry is moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking at the fashion brands that you're collaborating with, what is the most important data for the companies to share with, with their customers? Mm -hmm. So I think at least my experience is that for a lot of brands, it's the first and the most important is to have visibility in the supply chain, yeah. right? Before one figures out, okay, how do I tell the story to a, to a customer? So this is where the majority of our focus is to yeah. be the technology backbone to create that visibility. Mm -hmm. I give you a very simple statistic. If you look at the top 100 fashion brands that collectively drive close to $1 trillion sales in the global fashion industry, mm -hmm. these top 100 fashion brands have set a very clear target that by 2025, 100% of their materials need to be sustainable mm -hmm. and therefore traceable. Great objective, great ambition. Mm -hmm. right? But if you like, take the same top 100 fashion brands, 95% of them have very limited visibility beyond tier 1. Yeah. Of course, you know the tier 1, that's your direct supplier. Mm. Sometimes perhaps tier 2, the finished fabric mill, anything beyond that is a black box. Yeah. So that is basically the core challenge that industry is trying to solve, address this huge traceability gap. And then I think as a secondary part, then the question comes, okay, how do I tell the story to customer? Mm -hmm. And there we leave it completely up to the brand. Because mm -hmm. each brand has their own taste, yeah. has their own style, has their own branding guidelines of how they want to tell the story, which part to emphasize. So we basically provide that visibility and then decision making of how do they want to engage mm -hmm. consumers mm -hmm. is completely decentral and left to the brands to mm -hmm. decide okay. yeah, based on the business strategy and yeah. And, and their Aesthetics. value proposition, Aesthetics. Aesthetics. Aesthetics, and a lot of yeah. things, correct. correct. How do you then make sure that all the information going into the blockchain from the different suppliers, yeah. sub-suppliers, yes. contractors, yes. Uh, is valid? No, no, it's a great point, it's a great point. So I think this is where you've done perhaps the biggest amount of work that we have done is on exactly the same point, what mm -hmm. we call very detailed and robust modeling of the supply chain. This is perhaps the most important, mm. but the least understood aspect of traceability mm. and, and, and technology because people get lost in blockchain and all of the names. Mm. To be able to build a robust traceability system, you must have a robust modeling of the supply chain. Mm. So, uh, for example, we have built what we call the AI engine, rule-based AI engine. We model 320 different product flows in the textile supply chain. Mm. 
taking into account the conversion loss and yield loss. So when you take a specific type of yarn, what kind of fabrics you can manufacture and what kind of loss happens. When you take a fabric, what are the different uh, dyeing process or from the dyeing to finished fabric, you know, uh, finished garment, what are the different product categories you could make, whether it's denim, mm -hmm. whether it's a lady's dress, undergarments, and what conversion loss, wastage loss happens, right? And this modeling of the supply chain ensures that every transaction on the system reflect what happens in the real world. Mm -hmm. Second important validation is about composition. If you make a fabric which is 50-50 tensile organic cotton, the input yarn must also be 50% tensile 50 organic cotton. Mm -hmm. You can't, in the real world, you can't take 70-30 tensile organic cotton yarn mm -hmm. and make a fabric which is 50-50, not possible. Mm -hmm. So if it's not possible in the real world, it should also not be possible on the system. So those are very important critical business validations around composition, around country of origin, around transactions that we model on the platform. So what would your advice to a smaller fashion brand be uh, in the process of wanting to work with the blockchain mm -hmm. and, and creating this whole transparency yeah. around? So I think chain? first of all, look, they, they do not have to do it alone, right? Uh, the entire industry is moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. There are so small brands, I would first encourage them to first understand how the sustainable uh, materials market works, mm -hmm. right? There are different standards like textile exchange as one of the largest standards. We have US Cotton Trust Protocol, we have lensing materials. So there are different, very sustainable material solution providers mm -hmm. who already are working, uh, for example, on a traceability system. Yeah? So I think it's important for the smaller brands to, to build on what's ex already existing mm -hmm. instead of thinking about creating something uh, on their own because or in a smaller setting because it will not work. You have to drive it as an industry-wide uh, collaboration. You know? So connecting with the right partners. Connecting with the right partners yeah. is an extremely important mm -hmm. way for a smaller player to make impact mm -hmm. because that's where we actually start uh, making, you know, start getting the scale benefits. Mm -hmm. And and because uh, a lot of supply chain, for example, is in Asia. As a smaller brand, you may not even have a local team in, for example, China or Bangladesh or Turkey mm -hmm. in terms of supplier follow-up, right? Mm -hmm. So working with the right partners for, for smaller brands, mm -hmm. uh, both from technology but also from material side, in terms of you know, yeah. what are the right materials to choose yeah. Yeah. for your collections. Mm -hmm. And once you choose the right materials, a lot of those players are actually, uh, you know, uh, working uh, with. Like in many cases, we work with a significant part of the sustainable material solutions mm -hmm. uh, to provide and create that industry-wide scalability. Like I mentioned, lensing, mm -hmm. uh, US Cotton Trust Protocol, Suprema, mm -hmm. are both with textile exchange, with Canopy. This all ensures uh, that, that you know uh, smaller brands can build on that, uh, uh, the industry-wide scale where do you see the blockchain technology in 10 years within the fashion industry? So I think uh, here I would just say that uh, it's less about blockchain. It's more about solving a very important problem in the industry mm -hmm. in a meaningful, yeah. practical and scalable manner. And blockchain just happens to be one of the building blocks. Mm -hmm. It's not a silver bullet just because your blockchain doesn't mean everything will be solved. Not doesn't work that way, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a silver bullet. We are solving a very complex problem of supply chain traceability in a very uh, opaque supply chain, mm -hmm. in a very uh, long and fragmented industry. Mm -hmm. And blockchain is one of the building blocks. So what I see is that definitely 10 years down the line, almost every single brand would have traceability embedded in their business way of working, mm -hmm. would have traceability embedded in their supplier performance scorecard, would have traceability as a even a, a standard function within the brands. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, just five years ago, how many VP of traceability did you hear? Mm -hmm. Very few. Yeah, very few. Now I, I work with several global brands. Mm -hmm. You have VP of traceability, director mm -hmm. of traceability. Mm -hmm. Traceability as a separate function mm -hmm. is being set up because they're recognizing that look, we have been buying materials largely from tier one with very little understanding of what happens exactly. in the behind the chain. Yeah. Uh, which is very different from a lot of other industries. When you look at automotive or electronics, you have much, much deeper traceability.